Ooh, that looks good. Toss me one of those apples, Jeff. You got it. What is it about eating an apple outside of New England? Oh, well, they grow so well in our region, yeah. and I love how there's so many incredible local variations of them. Uh, and they don't just differ from state to state, but even town to town. Hmm. This apple's a little different than any I've seen before. How's that? Well, there's a little red fleck of color in the flesh of the apple near the core. Is this why we're in this small town of Franklin, Connecticut, looking for local apples? Well, sort of. We're looking for a specific apple tree in town that they say was witness to a murder. They say this apple tree is cursed. Hey there, I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Ozier. Welcome to episode 178 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. Thank you so much for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. We're more than just a weekly podcast, more than a television series that you can watch right now on Amazon Prime, and more than a super secret Facebook group and free smartphone app. We're a community of legend seekers who love these strange stories from the past. And so many of our story leads come from you legendary listeners, like this one that came in from Lauren Middleton. So please keep them coming. All right, Jeff, before we get too far into these Connecticut apples, we'd like to take a minute to tell you about our sponsor, Nuwadi Herbals. Yeah. These are folks who know great stories and legends need great companions, like a hot cup of tea. Nuati Herbals has a line of unique loose tea blends to help promote balance and good health. Now, my family and I have been enjoying their strawberry moon tea, cloud walking tea, and the warrior tea. That's just to name a few. Well, not only teas, Nuati Herbals has a line of balms, creams, massage oils, and bath salts. So, Ray, the other night, I was ready to try their wash my pain away bath salts. But I just couldn't do it. Why? What happened? I was so mad, I actually rolled audio on it. Uh, Take a listen. Hey, Megan, are you in there? Yeah? I need to use the tub to try out the wash my pain away bath salts. Um, I'm already using them. Well, how am I supposed to report on how good they are if you use them all? They're amazing. Just tell them I said so. (laughs) The struggle is real, Jeff. (laughs) Yes, it is. These are Native American-inspired products, herbal remedies from Mother Earth. Please support the people who are supporting us and our legendary listeners. You guys get 20% off your order when you use the promo code LEGENDS20 at checkout. Visit nuatiherbals.com. That's N-U-W-A-T-I, herbals with an S, dot com. All right, Jeff, so apples. Yes. We're in Franklin, Connecticut looking for apples. Ray, did you know that it's estimated there's over 7,500 varieties of apples in the world? You mean like Red Delicious, Honeycrisp, mm-hmm. Granny Smith, right. Macintosh, Golden Delicious, things like that? Yeah, those are some of the apples you might find in the grocery store, but there's thousands more out there and countless thousands of varieties that have been lost to time. Because these unique varieties of apples were made by humans, grafting the branch of one kind of apple tree to the branch of another to create a whole new variety. Now, some varieties may have only been on one tree in a farmer's orchard before it died off. I mean, that's pretty cool that anyone with an apple tree and a little knowledge of grafting can make a new apple. But this apple's a little different with those red specks inside. Right. It still tastes great. And they say those specks are harmless. It's just the deep red pigmentation of the skin of the apple bleeding into the flesh. At least... That's one thing they say. Oh, no. (laughs) There's more to this, isn't there? Well, another thing they say is that this old apple tree here in Franklin was witness to a bloody murder of a man. And those red specks in these apples? Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Well, anyway, they say this apple tree is cursed. And to figure out why, let's head back to the year 1716, back when Franklin was still part of Norwich, Connecticut. Set this up. It's the fall of 1716 here in the town of Norwich, Connecticut, and we're standing in the Pex Hollow section of town in the farmyard of Micah Rood. In 1699, when Micah was 46 years old, he purchased this land and started an orchard and a farm. He's a bachelor, never married, and no children. For the first several years, Micah loved the farming life, but he's been losing his zest for work recently. Year after year of toil and not much profit, is causing Micah to grow tired of his otherwise tranquil life. Now, though Micah mostly keeps to himself, he does hear scuttlebutt around town. In a rural area like this, news travels. And the most interesting news to come along in a while is that there's a peddler in town going from house to house. A peddler going from home to home isn't exactly newsworthy in 1716. Sure. Peddlers are how many people get unique items that their local general stores just don't carry. 
What makes this peddler stand out? Well, for one, this peddler speaks with a French accent. And this here is British territory. Folks are already suspicious. Then, when people around town see what this peddler has to sell, well, they start to suspect the worst of him. All right. Well, what's he selling? Jewelry and other trinkets that no one around here would really want. Now, you combine that with his French accent, and now folks suspect he may be a spy who's scoping out how defenseless this region may be. At least, that's the word going around town. This autumn afternoon, Micah Root is pruning his favorite apple tree in his orchard. Micah likes this tree because it provides sweet golden apples, and they're usually the first to be ready to eat in August. There he is tending to the tree. When a stranger approaches... Judging by the man's backpack and case he's carrying, Micah quickly figures out that this is the French peddler who folks are talking about around town. Hey, uh, let's step back a little. We don't want them to see us. Okay. Uh, I could see the peddler is opening his case. Doesn't look like there's much in it. Wait. Something seems weird here. Oh, yeah, I agree. Micah's looking around like he's nervous, uh, agitated. Oh, man! Micah just stabbed the peddler with a pruning shears. I I have no idea what just happened. He's stabbing him over and over on the ground, Jeff. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was crazy. What do you think just happened? I'm not sure we'll ever know. Maybe it was a robbery, or or maybe Micah was feeling over-patriotic and decided to kill a potential French spy. Uh, No idea. I'm not sure we're ever going to know. So there's no trace of the peddler after that? Which isn't a surprise to anyone in town. I mean, you know, peddlers move on. It's what they do. No one seems to miss him here in Norwich. So the winter comes, then goes here on Micah's farm. Then the thaw comes. It's now spring, and all of the apple trees start to blossom. Oh, and what a gorgeous sight, Jeff. The rows of trees with so many white blossoms exploding all over them. Uh, Except that tree. Which one? That one. Those blossoms are red, not white. Oh, man. Hey... Isn't that the same tree where... Where Micah murdered the French peddler last fall. That is so strange. The whole spring and summer, that lone apple tree isn't the only strange thing going on at the farm. Micah isn't himself. He's not tending to the animals. His small house is getting run down. He's keeping to himself more than usual. He's not talking to anyone at all. He's changed. And locals are wondering what happened. It's now late August when the apple tree limbs on Micah's farm start to hang low with heavy fruit. It's a good crop this year, and the apples look great despite Micah not giving them much attention this season. But the tree that had those red blossoms? There's something different about those apples. When Micah bites into the apple, he notices a red speck near the center of the flesh. It almost looks like a single drop of blood. Thinking it's a fluke, he tries a different apple. But it's the same story. Micah's heart is thumping in his chest. He's never seen anything like this, and, well, he knows what he did last fall. Micah is spooked. The apple tree was the only witness, and now he fears the red speck in the apple's flesh is a drop of blood from the murdered man. As if the apple tree absorbed the blood through the roots and made a deposit in each apple as a testament to the crime that was committed. And all the while, Micah has given up on his farm. He's given up on life. His farm haunts him, so he takes a position caring for the meeting house. Ten monotonous years pass like this. Micah sweeps the floors of the meeting house and slowly wastes away. By 1727, 74-year-old Micah Rood is now a ward of the town. Unable to care for himself, different families receive compensation for caring for him until his death, December 17th, 1728. And that brings us back to today. This legend has been kicking around Franklin, nearby Norwich, in this part of Connecticut for almost 200 years now. Now, we checked a bunch of sources on this, and no two seem to match. For example, a May 7, 1913 Hartford Current article claims the Rood family arrived at their farm in 1939. A really colorful retelling of the tale from the February 4, 1888 New England Farmer publication out of Boston sets the story in the early 1700s. In a different telling, some claim it was later in the 1700s during the French and Indian War. Now, though the dates and details vary a bit depending on who tells it, it always ends with the cursed apple tree and the apples with the blood-red fleck inside. Then you have to talk about them apples. Right. In the early 1800s, the Mike apple was a popular variety of apple in eastern Connecticut. They say the apple was originally called the Micah Rood, after the subject of our story. Some called it the Rood apple. 
Then they claim Micah became Mike, and the apple was known to have red specks in the flesh, which we know can happen. So you bite into the Mike apple, you see the red specks, and that looks different than most every other apple you've ever eaten, so you ask someone about it. And that person tells you some version of this story. And the legend continues to spread. So this story spreads not just around eastern Connecticut as the Mike apple gets more popular, but variations of the story were published in newspapers around the country, especially in the late 1800s. Now, we don't know if Micah Rood ever murdered anyone. There's no record of it and no admission by Micah himself. We do know that he was born in 1653, and when he was in his 60s, he let his farm fall apart until the broken man wandered into town and had to be cared for. Now, losing his marbles in his later years... It was easy to imagine various backstories, and then you add in the Mike apple. And we find ourselves wondering, is that just a speck of red, or the blood of a murdered man still crying out for justice? You know, the crazy thing is, this isn't our first story of a New England apple tree that may have absorbed the blood and guts of someone very <laughs> nearby. It's true. If you can't get enough of carnivorous fruit trees... <laughs> Then check out episode 108 of our podcast. It's called The Man-Eating Apple Tree. And if you want early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear, and if you want to help us continue to grow this movement and community, please consider becoming one of our Patreon patrons. For just three bucks per month, you'll get all that, plus we really appreciate the support. Head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. We'd like to thank our sponsor, New Audi Herbals, and our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think.